Hey there, Kayla Bajic of DIY Video Guy here, and I'm a filmmaker and videographer, and I deal with so many different kinds of video projects, whether they're my own that I put on YouTube, or I'm working for clients, and I have years worth of video files on external hard drives on my computer, stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I save space on my computer I'm working on, as well as my external hard drives. So my first tip is actually to take whatever common files you use all the time, things like templates, lower thirds, theme music, all that kind of stuff, and store it in one single location. And I actually put that in a Dropbox folder so that whatever computer I'm on, I have all of my common files for my clients. If I work with a client on an ongoing basis, I'm going to use the same files over and over again for them, like their intro and outro bumpers, their theme music, lower thirds. Those things all live in a common folder. And then any of my stuff that I use all the time, sound effects, motion graphics, uh, templates of Adobe Premiere Pro projects that I can open up and have some folders formatted already for the files I'm going to bring in. Any of those types of things I keep in one Dropbox folder so I don't have to have multiple versions of those things that end up taking up more space. Okay, number two is whatever software you're using for video editing, whether that's Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Final Cut Pro 10, all of those have something called a cache, C-A-C-H-E, a cache of files that they keep pretty much locally on your computer unless you tell them otherwise that are just gonna slowly grow and grow and grow. And these things are rendered versions of video clips that you've had effects, color correcting, graphics, stuff like that put on top transcoded footage, uh, audio waveform peak files, all this kind of stuff that helps run your playback on your videos when you're editing them a little bit faster. But when your hard drive starts to get full, you might not even know that it's putting all these cache files all over the place on your computer. So right here, we're under Adobe Premiere Pro settings for media cache files. And you can see this little check checkbox for save media cache next to the originals. I don't like to do that. I like to keep my cache files on my computer, which means A, my computer can access them a little faster, and B, I can actually delete them every once in a while to clear up space. So I leave that unchecked. But then you can see where your cache files and your cache database are kept at, which means you can always go to browse and it'll take you there and find your window if you're on a Mac, or click clean and it will actually clean out that database and, and clean it up a little bit for things you're not using. Sometimes it's just easier though to go to that folder and just delete all of the cache files. And if you open a project again, after you do this, after you clean the database, it might take a little bit longer because it needs to go and make all those cache files again. But think of all the cache files for videos you've made in the past that you're never going to open those project files again. You don't need those files on your computer taking up hard drive space. So empty the cache. Number three, and this video isn't sponsored, but Daisy Disk is an app that I really, really love. It is a hard drive analysis app for the Mac. There are other versions for Mac and PC. I used to use Disk Inventory X, but that one uh, runs a little bit slower uh, on the Mac, and then I've used ones before on the past on Windows computers like a decade ago. So whatever you use, something that you can get a scan of the entire hard drive, whether that's the one on your computer or an external hard drive, and it'll show you what's taking up space. So you might not realize that this one folder is even there on your computer and it's taking up a ton of space. So I use this to clean out my hard drive when it gets full or just maintenance every once in a while because you'll just forget that files are there and it'll help you save hard drive space if you use this. So it shows you graphically what the different kinds of files are and where they are, how much space they're taking up and it really helps you save hard drive space. It enables you to do it on multiple drives at the same time. So you could start a scan before you go to bed one night and then wake up and it'll have the information of all your different hard drives and what files are on them. And it works really well to just look at it visually to see what's taking up space. I just did one here on my hard drive. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. And you can see that my 500 gigabyte hard drive is pretty much full right now hence making this video about it because it made me remember to do so. And you can see as I move my mouse, it gives you the hierarchy of the files. So these are all under my slash users folder. 
These are all under my slash users Caleb folder because I'm pretty much the only one that uses this computer. And then you can see down here, this is a library folder. And look at that, application support is 124 gigs. Caches is 16.5. So caches are the things I talked about earlier. I could probably go into that folder and actually empty it out. So let me go into caches here. And you can see that most of the cache comes from iTunes, which is interesting. That's probably Apple Music, file downloads, things like that, maybe podcast, who knows. But then there's a couple here for Adobe. So that's probably cache files for After Effects here, 4.2 gigs, Lightroom, 127 megabytes. And I'm not in After Effects very much, and I'm fine with my computer remaking cache files. So it's just helpful to be able to go through the hierarchy of your computer and see what's taking up space. You can do this for external hard drives too. And you know, hard drives are better when they're emptier and you can do things to speed them up and have more you know, access memory on your hard drive to speed things up. So if your hard drive is full, you're gonna get slower performance. It's gonna be harder when you're editing things like 4K or multicam or whatever. So know your hard drive know how much space is left and use an app like this to make it better. And then a quick fourth tip here is to keep your footage on an external hard drive that has a good connection. So don't at this point in 2016 be having your external footage on a USB 2.0 hard drive. Your computer's just gonna chug when it's accessing that. Even USB 3.0, depending on what resolution you're playing your videos back at or how quickly you're trying to access things, you know, Thunderbolt 1 or USB 3.0 might be too slow. You might want to go to Thunderbolt 2 or whatever the current version of the best connection for an external hard drive is when you're watching this video in the future. It's okay to have external footage on an external hard drive. I like to do that so it keeps my main computer nice and clean, but it's not a bad idea to at least move stuff you're done using to an external hard drive to save space. So those are my four tips using external hard drives to store your footage, using something like Daisy Disk, having a common folder that you store everything in, and you're gonna be able to just do this stuff better because you're gonna have more space, especially if you delete those cache files as well. That would be the fourth one. So thanks so much for watching this video. I have other tips for making better videos on my YouTube channel, as well as not just production stuff and gear, but video editing for Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere, stuff like that. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it saved you a little bit of hard drive space if you're doing a lot of video production and editing, or maybe you're not and you just stumbled upon this video anyway. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more information about how to make better videos for the web. I've been Caleb Logic, DIY Video Guy. Thanks so much for watching.